podcast where we put you on the map. This is Ron Costa broadcasting live from the Mappable USA studios in Las Vegas, Nevada. And folks, what do you do with your opportunity zone investments? I bet you you never thought of the, some of the stuff that we're going to talk about today. So sit back and get ready to go. And before we do that, let's introduce Vicki Hutchmala from the QOZ Marketplace. Vicki, how are you doing today? I'm fabulous today, Ron. Beautiful day in Vegas, as always, even though half the country's under snow. We're just laying in the sunshine, having a beer, enjoying the day, and now we're going to get to work, talk to one of our favorite guests, and a whole new concept on opportunity zones and how they can be used that may be are more creative than than ordinary. So let's get started. Wait, wait a minute. You, you're Just, having a beer before the podcast? I'm going to have mine afterwards. But anyway, let's introduce Blake Christian. Blake is the tax <laughs> partner over at HCVT. Blake, how are you doing today? I'm I'm doing great, and I just want to make clear I don't do not have an alcoholic beverage in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think that, everybody listening to this podcast right now, they should pause the podcast, pour themselves a nice drink, and then start the podcast again. That's what I think we should have, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds but, great. But, uh, Blake, again, I want to thank you for your time. Uh, come on the, the show again. There's always – you're always a great uh, – form of good information on opportunity zones and i i know what we're going to talk about today is going to be really interesting and no one else is really talking about this so before we get going on that let's uh can you give us a quick background on yourself in case someone hasn't heard any of our previous episodes with you sure uh so again blake, blake christian i'm a cpa that i spend most of my time uh in in our park city utah office uh hcvt is a uh, a top 30 firm headquartered in Los Angeles, and we have uh, 14 offices, uh, primarily in California, but uh, Utah, Arizona, and uh, and uh, and Texas, we have offices, and uh, we're hiring in all offices. Uh, business is great, and uh, we handle uh, with my Oz team, which is kind of spread throughout the country. Uh, we have uh, six. Uh, full-time people that work on about 200 uh, Oz funds and uh, QOZBs. So uh, we we are very active in this space. Wow, sounds great. So so Blake, um, like I said, we're going to talk about opportunity zones, which we have uh, previously quite a bit. But now we're going to get into a little bit more creative aspect of opportunity zones and thinking outside of the box and doing things that aren't ordinary and not really involving building multifamily structures on uh, opportunity zone for real estate investment. So give us an idea of some new ventures in opportunity zones. Yeah, so... You know, we, we still see, even in our practice, um, you know, probably 70% of our clients are, are doing real estate projects, sometimes ground up, sometimes rehab, uh, but, but all aspects, uh, you know, uh, multifamily, uh, hotels, uh, as, as well as commercial properties. Uh, but we, as the other 30%, and, and we're a little unusual, uh, in the Oz world, but probably 30% of our clients are operating businesses. And I, and I've said from the start of the program, you know, a, a, you know, a, a grand slam in the real estate world, you know, you're going to double or triple the value of your real estate over a 10 year period. Uh, maybe more if it's a ground up build, but in a operating business, you know, you're typically going to exit that if it's successful. You're going to exit that operating business at you know probably a, a you know a minimum of seven, but it, you know if it's tech, you know it could be a twenty, thirty, fifty, hundred multiple exit. And again, in in the Oz world with that tax exemption with the ten year hold, that's a very very significant uh, you know benefit to having an operating business in uh, in one or more of the uh, opportunity zone 
census tracts. Uh, so just, you know, I, I'll, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll just kind of, I'm going to just list some of the businesses that uh, our clients have in opportunity zones. And, and there's a handful of these that I'm going to name that, that I've had discussions with people that it's their business plan. Uh, not all of them have launched. But, you know, there's biotech uh, infrastructure projects in, in the zone. We've got one client that's a rock quarry. Uh, there's another, uh, actually, this is an acquaintance uh, that's very, one of the more interesting, uh, but it's a very large mine that happens to, to all be in an opportunity zone. Had a client uh, in California uh, looking at a, a, a very, very large track of, uh, of wells, uh, petroleum wells uh, that will uh, that are going to be capped over a 10-year period, and then we'll develop that into uh, you know re real estate, you know thousands of acres. Uh, solar, uh, there's incubators out there, uh, computer server farms, uh, uh, an e-flight company that we're dealing with, uh, art gallery, uh, you know li liquor. Wow. How you started the uh, discussion, you know, liquor <laughs> manufacturers, group pubs. Um, I'm working with one attorney that has an interesting business model. I don't want to don't want to share his proprietary idea, but you know, just just think of long term, uh, you know, long term aging of uh, of, of certain liquors, um, shipyard, boat chartering. Um, movie and music recording studios in the zone. And then I'll, I'll end it with, uh, again, with a little self-serving piece here, but, you know, I, I actually have a few clients that are doing modular housing in opportunity zones. And then I have, you know, my own opportunity zone business, uh, MIT module, where we convert shipping containers into housing and retail and special purpose buildings. And that uh, that is, you know, both a real estate um, um, opportunity zone or QOZB as well as the operating business, and that that gives you some flexibility on the on the tax side. So, so I, I figured wow. I would just list, let you guys, you know, ask questions on some of those, and uh, or I could just start, you know, giving you some more detail on so, on some of these and some of the interesting aspects of them. Well, you know, here in Vegas, we have. Um, Nellis Air Force Base, and it's it's uh, in North Las North Las Vegas, far from the Strip, in that. But Nellis is a pretty significant uh, base in terms of homeland defense, in that. And there's a lot of opportunity zone areas around the base. And and as you're talking, I'm thinking, wow, you know, there's supportive businesses that could support Nellis and um, the veterans and the people that live there in terms of, of housing or uh, stores or schools, daycare, that kind of stuff, then that would be something that maybe is a little outside the box, but, you know, linking it to an Air Force base and also along a rail line that then brings a whole nother aspect to it as well. But these are things that people don't, you know, it, it doesn't doesn't jive that opportunity zones and military defense bases can really work well together for everyone. Yes, I, and uh, thank you for bringing that up because I didn't have that on my list, but I did, uh, as I think you know, just wrote an article for business yeah. facilities as soon as it's published, I'll, I'll share that with you, and then you can share it with your your listeners um, on your website. But yeah, right now there's um, there's a hundred and I think it's 180 um, military bases that are either adjacent to or in opportunity zones. And what what a lot of people don't realize is that the you know our defense industry is is extremely aging, you know, and, and we need to upgrade uh, our defense systems. And so all of these military subcontractors um, will be, you know, putting money in with all the, the strife around the country or around the world. Um, we will see that 
you know, that uh, defense contracting um, sector have some, you know, some massive, you know, probably trillion dollar infusions, and they're going to need new upgraded facilities and opportunity zones because they're a long-term play are perfect for this. And, oh, yeah. uh, you know, and, and these, you know, these, these mega corporations, they're, they're constantly having capital gains because they're selling properties. They've, they've got uh, investment portfolios. And so they can, they can be funding these, you know, these new facilities with, tax deferred dollars and then be building up these these 10-year tax exemptions so uh, I thank you for for bringing that up but uh, yeah for our strategic defense um, the opportunity zones have been underused but I think you're going to see them uh, used over the you know I think you're going to see a lot of infusion from defense contractors over the next five years Oh yeah, and and you know when when opportunity this is interesting um, when opportunity zones first started, uh, we talked to somebody in northern Nevada, and they were thinking about putting in a shrimp farm to farm shrimp in northern Nevada in an opportunity zone, which is you know really. Uh, kind of crazy but you know it's like if you can think the idea and you find it just like there's a a, um, new casino hotel casino being built on the strip and it's partially on an opportunity zone as well you can't do gambling or or that kind of stuff but the way that it's um planned out there's a portion that's in an opportunity zone that they can use you know, for the hotel part instead of the casino part. So it, it's just mind-boggling. If you can think it, you might be able to do it. Well, again, something that I left off, which which is, you know, criminal of me, especially since we just had the Super Bowl this weekend that we were talking about, um, Allegiant Stadium is exactly. uh, is 100% in the zone. Uh, exactly. And, so now you've got that real estate in the zone, and you've got the, you know, the the um, Raiders franchise in there. So uh, it, you know, they're very very uh, strategic moves uh, by some uh, some billionaires out there. That's for sure. Right, and and it, it puts a whole new um, whole new aura on opportun- opportunity zones that they're not stagnant. That they that. You know they're creative. That if you can use your brain, you can come up with something that, aside from all the basic, you know, the the capital gains and 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 all of that that everybody knows about, you can add a whole new layer to it and make it really great. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, so you know, in a perfect world, the uh, the the types of operating businesses that you want to put in a zone would be, you know, things that are capital intensive. So we're talking about defense contractors, but, um, you know, uh, tech, tech manufacturers, um, you know, chip makers. Uh, again, I, I, I had mentioned, um, uh, the, uh, solar farms, um, as well as, um, as the server farms, you know, that, that are going to use a lot of electricity, a lot of, um, uh, uh, you know, a lot of, of cost of tangible personal assets. Th- those, you know, with bonus depreciation, you know, you're, first of all, you're using tax deferred dollars to finance it primarily. You can, you know, layer in debt, which gives you additional tax bases for depreciation and tax credits claim, to claim those. And then 10 years out, all that depreciation that you expensed in the front end and got ordinary deductions for, you don't have to recapture in 10 years. And so you're, you're using all of the tax and economic investment principles together uh, in combination to really um, enhance your overall return on investment. And so um, that's, that, you know, that's, that's why we love doing the, you know, the, the operating companies. And then you throw 
solar that I mentioned, a lot of our clients are are layering in solar into the, their Oz projects, and the reason for that is now you're going to get a you know a a, a a 26 plus you know federal tax credit. Uh, again, I mentioned the bonus depreciation and, and the new tax bill that's you know going to likely pass. You're going to get 100 percent instead of the 80 percent right off in the year that you place those solar panels into service. And as long as you debt finance some of this, you're going to have tax basis to claim those. And so the, the combination of all those is just, it's mind boggling how much tax benefit you get on the front end. And then you're accruing this, you know, this long-term tax return, I'm sorry, tax-free return when you exit 10 years or later. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, you know, the whole thing about the military here really uh, intrigues me, uh, Blake. When people start thinking about investments into opportunity zones like that, uh, there there still has to be an opportunity zone fund associated with it too, right? They, they just don't go into the investment uh, as a regular, let's say, LLC, don't do they? No, no. You, you would, you would, you'd have to wrap it into and have, you know, have a opportunity zone fund uh, be the investor in that. And so, you know, this, you know, defense contractor that might have may been around for 80 years would set up a, you know, a new, a new entity um, that uh, would have a opportunity zone, zone fund that would be financed with capital gains that they have generated and uh, typically in the last uh, 180 days. And, uh, and then they would use that entity as the main funding vehicle for this new entity could be set up as a partnership could go direct to to C Corp status and then uh, you know they, they just start uh, you know built building out facilities and uh, and buying buying equipment yeah well, but in this example the entity is using their own capital gains on this but they could also be looking for outside investors who have capital gains to invest in the fund as well. Isn't that right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and that uh, the, the Business Facilities Magazine article I, I mentioned, we do talk about, you know, uh, exactly that, that some, some of the defense contractors may go, this is a perfect opportunity to get outside financing for, uh, for some of these projects, both debt and, and equity financing. Okay. Well, this brings me to a really interesting point that I've heard different uh, answers, yes and no, on, on. But a lot of investors, real estate guys in particular, are sometimes looking to 1031 uh, exchange into something different. Uh, is, is any of these 1031 exchangeable or, or not? You know, it, it's, it's so funny. I, on, our, on our Oz call this morning, you know, and I'll, I'll just give you the fact pattern. So, you know, taxpayer-funded Funded their Oz fund with five million dollars. They ended up buying a pretty, you know, um, dilapidated uh, church and some other properties. And unfortunately, the the church caught on fire, burned down. And so, one of my other partners, that's you know, the, that's the client partner on it, just told them, hey, you know, just you should just sell this, and you know, it's we'll just we'll just we're not going to do the deferral anymore. And then he contacted one of his um, associates and said, Hey, you know, can you do a valuation on this property? Let's put it up for sale. Long story short, they ended up flipping it in, in a few weeks, $8 million. Somebody wanted to, it was perfect for a, a large apartment complex. So, you know, they made dollars. <laughs> of you never know. <laughs> It, it, so, but anyway, they, what they're going to do, what they are planning on doing, is doing a 1031. So they found, interestingly, they found one five million dollar piece of property and one three million dollar that's in the zone, and a three million dollar piece of property that's outside the zone. So we're in the process of kind of working through it because you can't, you know, we, the three million dollar that's outside the zone is problematic, but we can tuck, you know, up to about 150 mil, uh, 150. 1.5 million of that into the um, into the structure because you can have 30% non-qualified assets in a QOZB. 
So anyway, there's there's a whole lot of planning, and and I'm glad you brought that up. You know, yeah, yes, you can still use 1031 to further defer uh, gains even after you've tucked that real estate into an Oz fund, and uh, it's, um, it's it's a good. Yeah, do you, do you see what you see what the power of prayer can do, right? In that situation. That's right. That That's right. right. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, but, but, uh, First really, burn down the church. <laughs> you know, oh, what, what, what I'm sad. seeing, like, as far as the uh, the 1031 is concerned, is a lot of these guys who own property, their biggest problem is finding replacement property that they, that they want to get into. And I, I think if you could do that with an opportunity zone investment, both on the real estate or business or whatever, like you're talking about, especially around the military bases, I mean, that would be a, a, a home run industry that nobody is really talking about right now. And uh, I would think that's kind of interesting. Yeah, and here's, here's one other little, you know, we, we've had this happen mi many times, you know, with, with all the Oz funds we have. But uh, let's say, um, and, and there's, there's another code section, 1033, which actually our client with the burned down church 1033 is involuntary conversion. So sometimes a city will, you know, come in and take take over a, your piece of property because they need to build a freeway through that, or or it could be a natural disaster. You you you've lost it in a fire. You you, act, you actually have up to three years to replace that property instead of the 180 days. Um, but uh, the the point I wanted to make is. In, in combining 1031s and 1033, we, we've had a number, because I always tell people, hey, 10, uh, the Oz program is excellent if you have a blown 1031. So somebody that cannot replace their property within the, the, the typical 180 days under, under the 1031 rules, uh, if, if you went into escrow, uh, let's say in November of last year, and um, to start your 180 days to find the replacement property, and now you're in, uh, say, May, if my math is right, uh, your 180 days expires. Well, even though you didn't find replacement period and uh, replacement property in time, a lot of people think that oh i have to pick that that gain up in 2023 because that's when the 1031 transaction happened and i wasn't able to execute on the 1031 but the way that code section 1031 reads is you know if you went into escrow and you were making the attempt to to do, put the replacement property in there actually that that gain doesn't ripen until May of 2024, the, uh, you know, 180 days out, um, and and when your money comes out of escrow. So so then, you know, net, net, now they have at that point they have another 180 days to roll it into an Oz fund. So uh, we we have salvaged a number of blown up 1031s when the attorneys and the tax advisors are telling the client, oh. Nope, sorry, nothing we can do. The gain ripened in 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 2023. Well, it didn't. It, it ripened in 2024. So just I know that that's a little nuanced, but uh, people listening that that would deal with 1031 will understand that. And I, I and I'll tell you, I've had a lot of people push back and and say we're wrong on that, but that that's exactly how the rules work. Well, you know, nuances save a lot of money sometimes. So it's good right. to know them for sure. Uh, I think and no, knowing the right people to help you also makes a big difference as well. Well, I was just right. going to say that. The thing about the Opportunity Zone pro program in general, which is so amazing to me, is the top level of it, that the very top of the mountain is just, hey, we have a great tax strategy for you. And it sounds so simple and so easy. But once you get down to the nitty gritties and all these little deadlines and things you have to know, you have to be crazy to think you can do it on your, on your own. You better, you know, you better get a professional to help you out with this because you don't want to mess it up. Yeah, absolutely. And there's, there's a lot of, uh, you know, especially since we're, you know, what are we, four, four plus years into the program, it is, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of um, – my, minefields out there that uh, and, and not 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 every 
Oz Fund is, is being operated properly. And so we, we spend about 30% of our time uh, trying to fix um, messed up Oz Funds. I can yeah. imagine that. I'm, I'm, I'm curious, though, when these people come to you with these interesting and original ideas, you know, solar farm or whatever, do they even understand that there's an opportunity zone component to it, or do you have to tell them that and say, well, you know what, this is a good idea. Go this way instead. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, most of the time they're coming to us because they already are familiar with the Oz program or they, you know, they, they want to learn more about it. But, yeah, the, the, you know, there's a, there's a percentage of the conversations that start off, you know, with no discussion of Oz, and then we, then, then we, you know, say, hey, did you know about this program? And th those are very interesting conversations. Right. And isn't there a component of Opportunity Zone that they mentioned, what are they called, no sin businesses? Is that even there anymore? Somebody told me that a golf course wasn't allowed for some reason. Yeah, I, and I don't know if they, if that's considered a sin business just because of all the cussing that happens on the greens. I don't know. <laughs> But yeah, there's, there's, there, you know, that, that that was kind of an odd one to me. But I, I think, I think it's, I think that's more of a um, an optics issue that they don't want uh, the millionaire, you know, country club types to be getting this this benefit and ha using tax dollars essentially for it. But um, yeah, look, liquor stores, massage parlors. I think they have tanning salons because they've never really liked tanning salons, um, and uh, and then, as you mentioned, golf courses uh, as well as casinos. And you can't even, because we had one project in Reno uh, that was a converted um, casino that, that went into uh, multifamily and retail. And uh, because of the kind of the staging of that project, they, uh, they wanted to keep gaming in there and even if you are the owner and you just lease you know lease some of the building but casino is go casino activities or go gambling activities are going on there it's still tainted if it's more than it's either five or ten percent of your your total um, square footage so you, you have to be very very careful now it, again it's another nuance but uh, you could Technically, I, I think it's just a loophole, and they, they'll close it eventually. But you you could actually operate a you know uh, in, any of these sin businesses could actually be operated at the at the qualified opportunity fund level, the top level. The, the, all, all of these restrictions are actually written in at the QOZB or the subsidiary operating level. So um, so there are some people that are trying to get around it. Um, you know, and, and running it in a, in a quaff. We do not recommend it because we think at some point they'll they'll close that off anyway. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, uh, before we close this out, I do have a, one other question. Actually, more of a statement. Uh, when you look at the whole program in general, they have the, the, the tax benefits at the you know, upfront kind of thing. But I think one of the greatest things about this program is the fact that you could exit out after, what, 10 years and, and pay no capital gains taxes on your entire uh, deal, right? So if you're a company... You can just cash in big time on that. I mean, do you, uh, do, you, do you agree? Do you think that's one of the best parts oh. about the program? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and so so to summarize, there, there's three components. There's the initial deferral. There used to be, and it may come back with some legislation that's out there, where you get a um, you know a, a a percentage exemption on your gain that has to be reported in 2026 that ranged from five to 15 percent. Uh, as a basis adjustment, and then and then ultimately it's the exemption, and and they're in reverse order. You know, I, I agree with you 100%, Ron. That the exemption is why you would do this, but most people get into the program for the deferral. You know, they have a a big yeah. sale, they have a 10 million dollar gain, and they don't want to pay tax on it, so they put the money in, and then they find out, oh wow, a 10% or a you know a full exemption after 10 years. That's nice, but that's that's really the big benefit of doing this. And the deferral is number two, and the basis adjustment is the the third lowest, you know, value I guess in um, you know in the program. But but a lot of people yeah. uh, 
get 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 them get them weighted wrong. Right, right. And to take that back to what we were talking about before, when you're talking about a military application, I mean, that that number could be just enormous. It's just crazy to think how much money is, is being run through that. So, I mean, that's kind of a that, – that should be people's takeaway. There's so many different ways to use this program that people don't even understand. Because like Vicky said at the top of the, of the podcast, everyone's talking about multifamily and, and real estate and uh, – you know, you're opening up a, a whole bunch of, of eyes on different opportunities. And, uh, you know, it's just it, it's, it's really mind-boggling when you think about it. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just throw, throw in one to really, you know, blow up everybody's mind. It's just, you know, a, you know with this AI craze going on right now, I mean, if, I, if I'm in the AI business, I, I, am, I am going to move. Because you, you can move an existing business. In, I, I, I'm going to move. Any expansion is going to go into an opportunity zone. I mean, because because that you know there's going to be billions, if not trillions, to be made on some of these inventions. You want those to be in an opportunity zone. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Although I got to tell you, I, I asked AI the other day, when will the Jets be in the Super Bowl? And he told me to start drinking. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm not, I don't don't even AI. go there. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, but but before we close this out, real real quickly, Blake, you have a, a prediction as to where the pro- the program is going in general over the next couple of years. Is there anything new that we're going to see? Well, you know, there, there's you know there's there's people pushing real hard. Um, you know, Shay Hawkins uh, just did a presentation. He was the the head legislative legislative aide, aide to Tim Scott, and so probably the you know one, one of the most knowledgeable people in the country on Oz and uh, he spoke yesterday and uh, he, he's still very optimistic. He's pushing real hard on, on this legislation that's been out there for a couple of years. Uh, he's optimistic that it'll get pushed through probably in April uh, as part of another bill, but this, this would extend the deferral period till 2028. Uh, it would increase some of the taxpayer reporting, and we're okay with that. It's not overly onerous. And um, and then would also layer in um, some rural, um, you know, expand the program into some, some more rural regions. Uh, and then it, it'll also fine-tune. It'll, it'll get rid of some census tracts that, that are in two ritzy neighborhoods. And uh, on a go-forward, they'll those will be – you know they'll be grandfathered, but you can't do any new projects in those, and they'll be replaced with uh, with with some new census tracts in, in in other more deserving areas. Um, so you know, so that's and and then one of the other the, the other things is they he's pushing to have and I and I've always pushed for this too to allow people even if they don't have a deferred gain. So they're not going to get the tax deferral component. So they're giving up a benefit anyway. But let let just somebody that with with money in the bank that didn't come from a capital gain, let them invest in these. And if they're if they're patient and sit on it for ten years, they should get the tax exemption also. Yeah. Um, it's really not going to cost the government anymore because they're they're already, you know, th- these people aren't deferring a gain on the front end. So. Um, so anyway, that's that's kind of the the quick legislative update. Uh, frustrated that it hasn't already passed. There's still a lot of bipartisan support. A little bit, a little bit less on the Democratic side than there was when it was first passed. But it, there's still there's still a lot of bipartisan support. Yeah, well, people wouldn't know any of this unless they spoke to an opportunity zone specialist, especially with everything we talked about in the podcast today. So, Blake, how do people get a hold of you? What's the best way to reach you? So uh, I'll give you my cell phone number, 562-305-850. So text, text me, uh, and then uh, the firm website is hcvt.com. That'll be on your website. And yes. uh, Blake Christian, or send an email to the Oz team at hcvt.com, and um We'll we'll answer any of your questions you have. Whenever you're not on this on the slope skiing, right? And that's uh, you know, that's I, I'm to say <laughs> I've not even been up this year. It's been so busy, but uh, uh, I, I I will go soon. 
Yeah. Okay. Well, then, Vicky, what, do you think? what do you think about this podcast? Any, any further questions or comments on what Blake was talking about? Wow. You know, we have been on top of Opportunity Zone since the beginning because, you know, Ron, we thought that this is such a great program and and could do so many things. And as our podcast today has proven, yes, it has. And not only have people shifted from the basic real estate aspect of it and into so many other areas, defense, even uh, medical facilities and solar panels and all of this other stuff, as well as getting the glitches out from the beginning to now, that it can't possibly not get better and more exciting. And also, because of all of this new creativity, you especially need to talk to Blake to make sure that whatever idea you might come up with is feasible and he can help you to make it successful, even though you have to wait a while, it it's, can only be beneficial. So I'm just excited about the new look of opportunity zones and the new areas where you can go in them. And Thank you so much, Blake, for being on top of it, for being one of the best experts in the field and helping people to realize what they actually can do with an opportunity zone because it was a special program, and it, now it's even better. Kudos to you, Blake. Well, well thank you, and I, ha- I have to thank uh, you, and, you and Ron, uh, you, you know, from the day this passed, you, you have been at the epicenter of education, and uh, you know you've you've always involved me, and I, I appreciate all the great information you get out to all your listeners. So uh, thank you for that. Excellent. Thank you know, you. you know, Ron. You know, Ron. I think what we should do is we should do a follow up podcast with Blake, and we can talk about uh, not only the future in more uh, depth, but also the things to avoid, you know, where opportunities failed and why they did and how to overcome that into the future. What do you think? Should we, should we drink a beer before that podcast or after that podcast? <laughs> I think that podcast deserves a before and after. All right. Well, listen, let's, uh, let's close this thing out here. Uh, Blake, again, thank you for being a guest on the show. Vicki, thanks for co-hosting this. And folks, you're listening to the Mappable USA podcast at mappableusa.com. If you go to that page, scroll down on the homepage, you'll see all our syndication sources. Just pick the one you like best and subscribe so you'll never miss another one of our episodes. If you want to be a guest on the show, like Blake was saying, there's a guest tab there. Fill that out. We'll see what we can do about getting you on the show. And if you like what you heard today, send us an email at info at mappableusa.com. Or just leave a comment on whatever page you're listening to this on right now. So thanks for listening. Thanks for your support. And we'll see you after next time with another Mapable USA episode. Happy-